if you by any chance happen to catch my uh, 200th podcast, which was a milestone for me, you learned in that podcast what drives me to get so involved in the research on study on aging, what I call the lie of age. And I'm not going to blow any secrets about that. If you haven't had a chance to, to hear it, I highly recommend you check it out. But I'm not alone in this field by any means. There were several people before me that actually started looking into this. And I realized today that I have not done a podcast talking about the person, the man that has done the foremost work in what they call healthy aging. Uh, this particular individual happens to be the whole reason I have a position, I have a job, and the whole reason I actually have a field of study. He's the father of fitness. He's the father of studying healthy aging. And he happens to be one of my two heroes. And of course, I'm talking about Dr. Kenneth Cooper today on the Personal Edge Fitness Podcast. Welcome to the Personal Edge Fitness Podcast with Garrett Williamson. Health, wellness, exercise, nutrition, and a whole lot more. Got questions? Call us and leave a message at 251-278-EDGE or message us at Personal Edge Fitness on Facebook and Instagram at Team PE on Twitter or PersonalEdgeFitness.com. Good day and welcome to the Personal Edge Fitness Podcast. My name is Garrett Williamson. I'm president of Personal Edge Fitness. Thank you so much for joining me today talking about one of my two heroes. Before I dive into this topic, and I'm surprised I haven't done this, this podcast yet, and given this particular individual the recognition he deserves. I've mentioned him numerous times, I, I, too many to count, in different podcasts and to my clients and even in consults, but I've never done a podcast about him and I'm going to try to keep this within my time limit because I could talk about the work this gentleman has done all day long. So let me tell you about how to get in touch with the show so we can dive right into it. If you have any questions concerning this topic or any other, or if you have a question, anything dealing with dispelling the myths of health, fitness, and wellness, please contact me at area code 251-278-3343. That's 251-278-EDGE. You can also reach out to me at my email address, which is Garrett, G-A-R-R-E-T-T, -T, at personaledgefitness.com. That's also our website, personaledgefitness.com, our Facebook page. Hit me up on Twitter or X at Team PE. Reach out to me that way if you'd like. Also, I always like to throw out, Katie has her own show now on our YouTube channel called Ask Katie. She's broken off on her own, doing a fantastic job. So if you have any questions for Ask Katie, and Katie's handling not only fitness and wellness questions, questions about your workout, but she's also handling questions about life. It's some, some doozies that she's gotten. So reach out to me uh, at, at any of those contact points, and I'll be glad to relay that information to Katie. This particular subject matter, this particular individual I'm talking about, deserves far more than a podcast. At least in my life, he does. And believe it or not, in yours, he does too. I have a podcast that I want to dedicate to him, and I'm surprised that this is podcast 200 and I think three or five, somewhere around there, that I've taken this long to do a podcast talking about the man who came before me, the man who really challenged the medical community, took it head on. Because what we know about fitness and about aging and about uh, cardiovascular health, we knew nothing about it compared to what we've learned since Dr. Kenneth Cooper broke on the scene so many years ago. I'll give you a little background on Dr. Cooper. He is a physician. He's an MD. He received his MD from the University of Oklahoma, and then he went on to receive his master's in public health, MPH, from Harvard University. Pretty smart guy. But Cooper, not only does he have that education, but he happened to be an Air Force flight surgeon. And during his time in the Air Force, he witnessed the physical decline of many servicemen and became increasingly interested in understanding the link between exercise and cardiovascular health and, and overall wellness. This is where he was introduced to it. This is where he really started developing the passion for researching, you know, instead of being as the medical community was at that time, reactionary to aging. Basically, they were looking at aging the way I've, I've given that definition several times about aging, you know, events or things that happen to you either spontaneously or through deliberate action. And he was a big believer in what I think is basic common sense. Things don't just happen. There's no reason. It just happened. Bull. Everything happens for a reason. And so to believe that decline is just spontaneous. No, absolutely not. In fact, there's as you've heard me say many times, there's not one clinical study on the face of the earth that proves that it just happens spontaneously. That's it. It's just time passing and it occurs. He believed in deliberate action and he started doing research on it. In 1960, right around there, he wrote a groundbreaking book. The name of the book was Aerobics. And he actually started doing research as early as in 1966. I've got a study here. I'll quote in a minute on aerobic conditioning. Those words weren't in our lexicon. It didn't exist really until Dr. Cooper brought it into being. Something that you've heard probably all your life and something you've used probably several times. Well, this is where it comes from. Uh, it comes from Dr. Kenneth Cooper. He started doing these studies and, and he started actually preaching 
completely against what the medical establishment was saying. He was actually doing studies. Uh, I told you I quote some studies. I got a lot of studies I'm going to quote here. I got tons of data on this. Could go for days. But I'm going to start with a very small study he did. But it was called the Dallas Bed Rest and Training Study. He did this in 1966 and had five healthy males involved in it. Not a huge population. But this is not something in 1966 we didn't care about. You know, once you hit a certain age, literally, doctors were telling their patients that were over the age of 40 to take naps on a regular basis, to get first floor apartments, to basically slow down, not be active. And basically what they were telling them to do is they were setting them up to die. And Dr. Cooper looked at that and said, that's ridiculous, and started this other way of thinking. We think of that now as, oh, yeah, of course, exercise. We've always done that. No, we haven't. Believe me, it was revolutionary. But there's one study here. He's done several of them during that time. But these five healthy males, he demonstrated that being sedentary for as short as three weeks could lead to a significant decline in cardiovascular health. Wow, Garrett, that's really groundbreaking. Yeah, but this is 2023. This was 1966. This was a shock, surprise. In fact, he was criticized for his thinking. I actually got some of these quotes here. It's amazing. This was actually done by an anonymous physician, but it was said more than once. Quote, it's a fad. There's more to health than merely running around. Because in Dr. Cooper's book, what he wrote, instead of telling what most physicians were telling patients at the time, to slow down, to take naps, to get first floor apartments, to get the post parking spot, whatever. He told them, no, do the exact opposite. In fact, get up. In, in, in fact, get moving. In fact, get walking. In fact, get running. In fact, here's how to run. It literally has, has a workout in the book. And it was shocking. Another quote, while I appreciate Dr. Cooper's enthusiasm, I believe he may be oversimplifying the complexities of human health. That was Dr. John Harper, who was a general practitioner in the 1970s. 1970. I mean, I literally heard fitness is a fad all the way up into the 80s. I literally heard medical professionals saying fitness was a fad up until the 1980s. Again, I've told you many times I, I come from a medical family. I have nothing against physicians whatsoever. I have a tight tie with the medical community, not only in my town, but also in Alabama and outside of our state. So I'm not... That's not what I'm trying to bash an entire community. There's plenty of personal trainers, I think, that should not be even thinking about personal training. There's bad acts in every single field. But I had a client come to me in as late as 2000 and uh, had back surgery and did not want to go through that again. Was aggressive about his rehab. And after he got finished with his rehab, back was feeling better. Actually asked his physician, is there anything I should do to continue making sure this doesn't happen again? Because no, 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 no. In a few years, we'll come back. We'll do the surgery again. It's an exact quote. In fact, it's, it's what brought that person to me. So that thinking, and it wasn't just relegated to physicians by any means. It was a general public. It was, it was many, 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 many health professionals. Y'all know we have dogs here. They wanted to speak up evidently. So this is what Dr. Cooper was up against. And these are just some of the criticisms that he got of his earlier work. Until he started his studies. And like I say, he started them as early as 1960, but I'm going to go through some of these, and I hope it don't bore you to tears because this, this stuff fascinates me. But let me go back to one of his most popular, which is called the, it's abbreviated ACLS. It's the Aerobic Center Longitudinal Study. Listen to the length of this. The ACLS, which began in 1970, notice I didn't say when it ended. It's still going on. Began in 1970, has been a foundational study in understanding the link between cardiovascular fitness and longevity with over 80 thousand participants and data spanning decades. The study conclusively demonstrated that higher levels of cardiovascular fitness were associated with decreased mortality rates. That last part, you're not shocked by. But again, this is 2023. He was after proving this in 1970. Here's another one. The Cooper Center Longitudinal Study, initiated again in 1970. The CCLS is one of the most comprehensive and prolific repositories of health-related data in the world. The study involved data from a large group of individuals and studied the effects of physical fitness on mortality, among other factors. A myriad of studies has been published utilizing this data, giving vital insights into aging health. We would be here all day if I listed all the studies that have either tried to replicate what he's done or borrowed from this one study. I mean, I, I could do a whole podcast just sitting there listing, you know, the XYZ study from 19 whatever conducted by whatever college. I'd be here all day listing those studies. And this study is still going on. They're still collecting data. So if you're involved in fitness, if you're involved in any aspect of fitness, this is the man you have to thank. If your life has benefited because of fitness, your energy level, the way you feel, your longevity, if you've had an instant, a stroke, a heart attack or something, and you've benefited from fitness, here's your guy. This is why he's my hero. Speaking of cardiovascular health and what we know about working with the heart, especially after some kind of heart event, Dr. Cooper was the first person to ever say, after an event like that, we need to get you exercising. Before that, 
every physician, if you think about it, think about the way we typically come to our own conclusions as far as health is concerned. The physicians at the time and health professionals at the time, general public, somebody had a heart attack. That's it. So much of their lifestyle was over. Never going to do that again. Don't pick up a shovel. Don't rake your lawn. You know, basically slow down. We don't want that to happen again. He was the one that turned that around completely. Said, no, let's get exercise. Let's get moving. So cardiac rehab. Cardiac rehab exists because of Dr. Kenneth Cooper. You may have heard that name before. You may have heard the book Aerobics. I'm sure you've heard of the word aerobics. But what else you may have heard of is his world-class facility. It is the top research facility in health, fitness, and wellness, especially in aging in the world. No matter what you hear, I don't want to mention any other clinics, not to bash them or whatever, but nobody compares to no other clinic compares to the Cooper Clinic in Dallas, Texas. It's been known as the Cooper Roach Research Facility, and now it's, I think it's officially the, the Cooper Clinic. And he has continued his studies, never stopped. I had a chance to hear Dr. Cooper speak. Phenomenal. If, if you ever get a chance, do. By the way, yeah, he's still alive. In his 80s now, and he still still does presentations, still writes books. And if you ever have a chance to hear him speak, I, I cannot encourage you more. I promise you that'll be one of the best talks you've ever heard. He's quite phenomenal. But he's continued his studies, and I've quoted several of his studies. The nursing home study was one of my favorites. He took 300 participants. He had them do five or six simple exercises. Now, most of these you can do sitting in a chair. And he had them conduct those exercises. And every two weeks, they adjusted the exercises. If it was too hard, they made it easier. If it was too easy, they made it harder. At the end of six months, the participants in that study saw an average muscle gain of 50%. Now, if you don't want a muscle gain of 50%, I'll take yours. Anybody would kill for a muscle. I don't care how strong you are. I don't care where you are in your life. I don't care how you close fit. Anybody would like to have a 50% muscle gain because if you add 50% more muscle, your body composition, no matter your gravitational pull of the earth, in other words, weight, doesn't matter. You are healthier, period. Your energy level is better. You're going to live longer, period. <laughs> and so the average age of those participants was 70 years old. Now, that may not seem amazing. Again, this is 2023. That study is about four years old. And he's replicated that same study for 80-year-olds. 90 year olds. And when I heard him speak in 1999, they were in the middle of a study with centurions, people that were over 100. And guess what? Found the exact, exact same, identical statistics, identical findings, no matter the time on the calendar. This is why you can tell he's such a hero to me. Let's go over a couple of studies he's been involved in. I won't bore you too much longer, but it's not just aging that he's done. He's done multiple studies on children. He's got books written out about fitness for kids, but just one of them is the research on exercise and childhood obesity, which was done in the early 2000s. The population was a large population. It was a rather diverse young groups. Basically, the study showed that aerobic fitness could mitigate the adverse effects of childhood obesity, encouraging a healthy progression into adulthood. Obviously, we know that, but we know that mainly because because of his studies. That's where we have the data. And the reason I bring up these studies is, remember what I said at the beginning, there's not one single clinical study, not one, that proves that time passing on a calendar causes degenerations. But look, just this one vigil with this one clinic, multiple, multiple studies showing that all the stuff we believe about time passing on a calendar causing degeneration is a lie. He hasn't stopped. He's done one recently, and I actually haven't read it. I did some research on before this podcast, looking at some of the studies he's done. I came across this one. I had no idea that he's involved in this. It's something I'm very, very, very interested. But in 2018, he conducted a study, and I'm not sure. Again, I apologize. I have not gone on to research how long this study went on, or if it's still going on. Which, which quite possibly, the way he does things on aging, the study's possibly still going on. But in 2018, he started a study on researching on the impact of exercise on brain health. He's gotten together with other professionals, I believe another clinic or two, where they're starting to research dementia. Again, something with it, well, that just happens with age. No, it doesn't. I've done, I've done a podcast on dementia. One of the things I talked about more prominently was the water doctor and his book, You're Not Sick, You're Thirsty, or You Don't Need Medicine, You Need Water. And the number two risk factor for dementia, remember what I said about risk factors, the number one killer is actually obesity. It's not heart disease. Why? Because that happens to be the number one risk factor for seven of the top 10 killers. It's number two for dementia. Number two risk factor for dementia is obesity. So you can see why Dr. Cooper would be interested in dispelling that ridiculous myth that dementia just comes with time. No, we're actually causing it. And we're looking for the cause of it. And here he is doing a study in 2018 the study revealed that high aerobic fitness in middle age can lead to a decreased risk of dementia in later life. Now, I say that's an easy conclusion to draw because higher amounts of aerobic fitness in middle age is going to stave off, in most cases, it's going to keep people from becoming obese or at least mitigate their obesity, which number two cause of number two risk factor 
of dementia, of course, obesity. Participants with the highest aerobic fitness had a nearly 90% reduction in risk of dementia compared to those with lower fitness levels. There's a cause, folks, and it's not time. It is not time. That's a convenient excuse, but it's not time. And I would argue, I, I, again, I, I want to go back and research the study. And if I go back and find a lot more information, I'll do a podcast on it. But I bet you money in the population that he studied, he probably studied a lot of people that are, quote unquote, genetically predisposed for dementia. We have this weird belief that, well, my daddy had, my granddaddy had, but everybody, okay, then I'm going to get it. Well, too many times we don't think of, well, my great, 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 great granddaddy, his nutrition was horrible, his fitness was horrible. So it was my great, great granddaddy. And my granddaddy, you see where I'm going with this. And you go all the way down to you have that same lifestyle. You have that same mindset. You have that same fitness level. You have that same nutrition. Well, guess what? <laughs> You're going to get the same results. Like the, you've heard me use this quote before, the client of mine that seriously believed his fat was hereditary because his daddy has his all in his stomach also. <laughs> well, they had the exact same lifestyle, life, same job. Uh, I think they had the same number of kids. And Dr. Cooper is the one that stepped up, that challenged the norm. I can only imagine the criticism they took. I only touched on a couple of things that were criticized about him. What is he done as a medical profession besides this? Well, he's been the doctor for several prominent individuals. One of them being, if you're a soccer fan, Pele. He actually worked with Pele. And Pele saw that this is the person that's really looking at science-based information as far as aging, ability, exercise. And so he worked with him. He was also the physician for the Bush family, George Bush Sr. and George Bush Jr. when they were both president. And they had their physicals done up in Washington. Dr. Cooper flew up there, and he was actually their their personal physician, and many, many others. I'm also one to do this podcast because I had the privilege of actually being involved at the Cooper Clinic during my studies at the United States Sports Academy. It was one of my reasons for going to the Academy. I remember sitting around, down with Dr. Frank Stanick, brilliant kinesiologist. He was head of the program at the time. He actually went to lunch with me before I actually signed on and started at the Academy. I didn't even put my paperwork in, and it's funny that a, the student sitting here challenging <laughs> the, the dean of the department. But I sat down with him and, and I said, you know, the one thing that will make me go to the academy to get my master's will be your access to Dr. Cooper's clinic. I want to do an internship at Dr. Cooper's clinic. Thank God. It was one of the greatest days of my life. He said, not only can you do an internship, you can do a mentorship. You can go out there and spend three months all day, five days a week for three months, which I did. And major change in my life. As far as I'm concerned, it's a stone in my crown. Where I got to actually work out there with them. The medical field obviously has changed, which I'm, I'm glad. And, and it, it's hard. I mean, I could beat up on trainers that had great ideas years ago and their ideas were wrong and I could easily beat up on them. Well, the, the knowledge wasn't there. And so I don't mean to critique a profession like that. So judge them by the knowledge we have now. That's not really fair. But it's turned a corner and I wanted to give you some good quotes that Dr. Cooper received. Dr. Cooper's seminal work has earned him praise from various corners of the scientific community. Noted scientist Dr. Dr. Tim Church once remarked, Dr. Cooper has had a bigger impact on the health and well-being of the global population than any other physician in history. Obviously, obviously that speaks to my life. That wasn't his only quote. And I, again, I could be here all day with quotes of lauding the amazing accomplishment of Dr. Cooper. Quote, Dr. Kenneth Cooper's studies have shed critical light on the health dynamics of our aging population. His research underscores the indispensable role of exercise in our lives. Dr. Jane Smith is a cardiologist. Quote, the Cooper Clinic's findings have been pivotal for preventative medicine. Dr. Cooper has been instrumental in showcasing the power of physical activity in aging gracefully. Dr. Richard uh, Lewis is a geriatric specialist. As I said earlier, I'm so glad that we've gotten away from the reactionary thinking about aging. That is what leads us to this ridiculous belief that time's passing on the calendar, things that happen, there's nothing I can do about it. The foremost authority of that is, of course, Dr. Cooper. And like I said, I'm doing a disservice if I didn't tell you a little bit about him. If you want to learn more about him or about anything dealing with dispelling, as you see, historical <laughs> myths of health, fitness, and wellness, please contact me at area code 251-278-3343. That's 251-278-EDGE. You can also reach me at Garrett, G-A-R-R-E-T-T, -T, at personaledgefitness.com. Reach out to me at our website, our Facebook page. Hit me up on Twitter at, at Team PE. I, um, I have a couple of heroes. My other one happens to be my brother, believe it or not. But as far as my hero and what I do, the whole reason I have a career, the whole reason that personalized fitness exists, the whole reason that we are making a difference in people's lives is because of Dr. Cooper and the Cooper Clinic. And I am, I feel, <laughs> I don't know if I can claim this honor or not, that I am picking up his torch or joining him in carrying this torch and leading the charge as far as fighting this ridiculous lie of aging. And by doing so, doing our best to help you reach your level of wellness. Thank you so much for joining me today. Thanks for listening to the Personal Edge Fitness Podcast with Garrett Williamson. 
Subscribe now and be a part of the show by calling 251-278-EDGE or message us on Facebook and Instagram at Personal Edge Fitness or at Team PE on Twitter and visit us at PersonalEdgeFitness.com.